Okay, good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today we're here to do a what I think is a very important but special webinar where we review the different tools and services that you have access to here at Options Play. And I think this is really important for many of you that are either members of Options Play, perhaps you're on a free trial, and you want to know, you want to understand the, all the different resources that we have available to you as part of your membership and as part of your free trial so that you can really maximize what you're getting. We wanna make sure that you know how to use all the tools properly. So I wanna go through each one, show you best practices for you know what they're used for, how you can utilize them in your trading. And if you didn't know uh, that they existed, how to access them so that you can add them to your options trading uh, portfolio, if you will. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we do, what we're going to discuss here today is purely for education or demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. Now, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about our daily play, which is by far one of our most popular services that many of you utilize in your trading. Now, I want to talk about the daily play itself. What do you actually get from it? What you should expect? And what are best practices for actually implementing them in your portfolio? It's one thing to get the idea. It's another thing to trade it correctly in your portfolio. So we want to talk about that separately. I do want to give everyone just a brief overview of the options play platform, specifically some of the new features we've recently added to the platform. Uh, perhaps you may not have noticed. So I want to make sure that everyone understands uh, those um, those new features. Then I want to talk about the new reports that we've been generating. We've been generating a lot of reports. Some of you, depending on whether you're selling cover calls, whether you're selling credit spreads, you might be utilizing these reports for your trading. So I want to make sure everyone understands what reports are available, how to go about using it, and how to access the each of those reports. Now, for many of you that are either in a learning process or even if you're an experienced options trader, you might find that you need education, that you want to continue your education, you want to make sure that you're constantly aware of best practices. You know, at the end of the day, even as we as professionals, there's still certain things that we learn uh, that are new as markets evolve. So we really want to make sure that you understand, um, you know, what are the newest uh, education, what are the newest practices that we generally stay on top of as traders and adapt to markets. And lastly, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the market outlook sessions. We do this every single Tuesday and Friday morning to make sure that you stay on top of the markets. I know that the markets are shifting all the time, uh, especially with depending on whether we're looking at the um, the the US equity markets, if we're looking at the different sectors, we're looking at specific trade ideas, they are all uh, constantly evolving. So we wanna make sure that multiple times a week, we help you stay on top of what's currently going on and so that you see the ideas that are coming across our desk and how we're analyzing it. Then I wanna show you some of the new features that are coming out before the end of this year, uh, giving you a sneak preview of the things that we've been working on. And then at the very end, we'll open this up for Q&A. Now I just wanna check the audio here. Can everyone hear me loud and clear? Please type one into the chat window if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay, perfect. I see a lot of ones. Great. So, you know, today's session, what I really want to do <clears throat> is try to make sure that everyone understands, uh, you know, how can you maximize your membership here at Options Play, whether you're on a free trial or a membership, you know, the free trial gives you access to everything so that you can experience everything before you actually commit to a membership and uh, make sure that you have access to the correct education to help you continue your education, continue your uh, options trading expansion for your portfolio. So my name is Tony Zhang. I've been a market strategist for 15 years. So I spent the, the bulk of my, my career helping retail and institutional investors better understand the current market, uh, understand market color, understand how to utilize the tools for your trading. Now, everything that we do here at Options Play is designed from the ground up to try to support you as a trader, whether it's education, whether it's the platform, whether it's the opportunity reports that we generate. We really want to make sure that you have access to everything and that you understand how they all come together to make your options trading as efficient and as easy as possible. So 
that's what, that's what I want to spend a little bit of time on. And by far, I would say the most um, popular uh, tool that you guys utilize here at Options Play are the daily ideas that we send out, the daily play ideas. Now, for those of you that are either on a free trial or a member, you may have noticed that you're getting emails every, every day at 6 a.m. Eastern time in your inbox. Now, this is, the, this is the pick of the day, if you will. This is uh, me and my research team. What we do is we look at the opportunities in the market and we look for specific ideas that align with a fundamental view and a technical view where we are able to find either a bullish stock where we like the fundamentals for um, or a bearish stock where we don't like the fundamentals for and then make sure that there is a specific option strategy that we can trade off of it. Now, we will give you the specific entry and exit signal, meaning telling you exactly when to enter the trade and when to exit the trade. These are always going to be sent out at 6 a.m. to your inbox. Now, this is only going out to members. So if you're on a free trial or if you're on a membership, you'll receive this in your inbox every single day at 6 a.m. Generally speaking, these will either be a credit or debit spreads. Occasionally, we'll do a long call, long put. Occasionally, we'll do a count. Calendar, but for the most part, we generally stick to credit and debit spreads. And a lot of questions, you know, asking us, you know, how do we stay on the top of the portfolio? How do we look at performance? You can actually see the performance using this link here on your screen. We've now created a way so that's automated, that's automated and updated every single day. Um, you know, we were doing it manually for a while, but now it's fully automated so that you can see the performance of all of our daily plays using that link here on your screen. And this is also sent to you every single day in your email inbox. So in your email inbox or in your daily play, if you scroll to the bottom, there will be a link to, so that you can see the open positions, the closed positions, and all of that is all automated now. So that's all available. So if you want to look at the open positions um, and, and what the performance of the closed positions are. Now, as far as these signals themselves, we've been getting a lot of questions from investors asking us, you know, once we get the signal, how do you actually go about trading it? So I wanted to break this down because you get these ideas from us multiple times a week. We want to make sure you're utilizing it correctly for your portfolio. So first and foremost, whenever we, we give you a signal, you want to enter them as a limit order. Okay. A lot of questions about whether you want a limit order or market order, always use a limit order. And you always want to place the orders after the market opens. You generally don't want to place an order before the market opens. So for example, if we have a, a, um, a debit spread, uh, or for example, for Peloton, where today we were trying to sell it for $3.70 credit, you want to enter this as a limit order after the market opens. The reason you want to do it after the market opens is because if the market opens substantially different from that price, um, so for example, if let's say today the market opened at $4.00, you wouldn't want to place that limit order at 370. You might want to replace your order at $4, collect more credit for that credit spread. So you don't know where the markets are going to open until they open. That's why we always specify um, enter this order after the market opens. Generally speaking, we also do not suggest that you chase the trade. So sometimes we'll tell, we'll, we'll show you a trade idea. Uh, for example, Peloton, yesterday's close is around 103, 104. If let's say the next day the stock opens at 107 and the stock has jumped a lot already, don't chase that. You only want to place your trades where you can get filled within 10% of the quoted price. So if we quote you a price, you know, give or take about 10%. That's the range of which you can chase it. Outside of that, we, we generally suggest that you basically move on to the next trade or just wait. Perhaps, you know, later in the day, the stock will come back to those levels and you can get back in again, but don't chase these stocks. Um, don't chase these ideas. Um, you know, they are fairly time sensitive and you only want to trade them if you can get executed within 10% of the quoted price. Now, the most important part about the daily play is not necessarily chasing or when you enter your order. The most important part is how much risk do you actually take for each individual trade? So we can't control for you how many contracts you trade. You must uh, do that on your own. So our 
what we always teach investors, and this is something that we have courses on if you want to learn more, is never risking more than 2% of your entire portfolio on any given trade. And what you have to make sure that you consider is the max risk of each uh, individual trade. So max risk uh, is what you want to make sure that that max risk never exceeds 2% of your entire portfolio. So, it, you know, in the Peloton spread, if we sell that for $3.70, the max risk on that trade was $6.30 or $630 a contract. So you, based on that $630 max risk per contract, you wanna calculate what is 2% of your entire portfolio and make sure whatever number of contracts that you trade multiplied by the 630 does not exceed 2% of your total portfolio value. So even if this trade goes 100% south and you lose 100% of the max gain, that you are only at that point losing 2% of your entire portfolio, leaving 98% of your portfolio intact for the next trade. Now that's a rule of thumb that we have for all trading, not just the daily play, but that is the general rule of thumb. If you're gonna follow our positions and you want to make sure that you can continue following those positions, you better make sure that you stay within these types of rules. And then you can always go to the Options Play platform, the Options Play portfolio tool. We'll show you uh, all of the live and open open positions so that you can get a sense for what are the current open positions in that in, in that um, in that platform. Okay. So before we move on, I just want to make sure everyone understands the, the rules for following our daily plays. Enter as a limit order within 10% of the quoted price and make sure that you never exceed 2% of your total portfolio in terms of max loss on any given trade. If that makes sense to you, please type two into the chat window. Uh, Gary, I'll take a look at that in one second. Um, uh, Robert's asking a great question. He's saying, is it the quoted price of the underlying? No, the quoted price of the option. So when we tell you to sell an option, for example, the Peloton spread today was about $3.70 credit. We're talking about 10% of the quoted price of the option, not 10% of the underlying stock price. Okay. Um, I hope that clarified your question. Uh, clarified your question. Okay, so uh, you know, by far, like I said, daily play one of the very popular uh, use uses of the services that we offer. So I want to make sure everyone understands how to use that properly. Now we also send out on 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 Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays when we're not doing the Tuesday and Friday morning market outlook sessions. We send you our market observations. Now this goes out at 11 a.m. Uh, on again on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And I actually want to ask investors. Uh, or, or members here, you know, how they want to receive this email, because we've been getting some uh, emails lately saying that we, you know, we send a lot of communications, you want a reduction of that communication, we want to respect that we know that you guys get a lot of emails, we don't want to spam you. So we are thinking about moving this 11am uh, email into the same email that you get with your daily play. But this is really an email that you get out that you get only if you're a member and only if you're on a free trial, where you get a full market update from me as far as where I currently see the broader markets. You get my market observations. These are my top uh, trade ideas for the day or the things that I'm paying attention to that I think are moving from a chart setup perspective. Generally speaking, these are also stocks that perhaps are in the news uh, that you might be reacting to and how I'm currently looking at that. So this is part of where you can get a sense for how I'm viewing the broader markets and specific trade ideas for the day. And then we also recently added an income analysis an income analysis session from Prakash, who will take a look at the daily cover call and short put reports, which I'll talk to you about here in one second. You can access those cover call and short put reports as part of this email. But he actually looks, looks at those reports and finds very liquid stocks that have very high yields from either a cover call or a cash secured put. And we highlight them just to give you an understanding as to how you might want to utilize these uh, reports and perhaps find some opportunities either for a cover call on a stock that you own or as a cash secure put perhaps as a stock that you may want to purchase but with the report being able to purchase it at a very at, at a fairly heavy discount just for example 
We use Tesla today because I know a lot of you own Tesla. Tesla has made a pretty big run here over the past couple of days because of the news that they were being added to the S&P 500. And we found a cover call that was still $100 above the current price that was providing quite a bit of downside protection and a lot of yield. So perhaps if you own Tesla stock, this might be an opportunity to generate some additional income on your portfolio and uh, you know something that's really far out of the money. On the same token, one of the questions that I get from a lot of investors is really NEO. Uh, NEO is one of the top stocks that I keep getting questions about these days. So I wanted to highlight an opportunity to potentially um, buy this stock with almost a 10% discount. I'm sorry, a 14% discount using a cash secured put. So this is one of the things that we wanted to, sh to show you was to, you know, just how you can utilize options, not just to speculate, but also to enhance your stock positions. So this is what we send out every single day at about 11 a.m. Um, every single day. Again, we're, we're thinking about combining this with a 6 a.m. email so that you're getting one email instead of two emails. Um, so this is something that I'm going to ask everyone to provide us with some feedback here uh, today uh, with a survey that we're going to ask you to fill out here at the very end. Um, and, you know, for any of you, if you feel that you're missing out on something like this, if you feel that, you know, one of these things you're a member, but you're not getting it or you don't know how to access it, send us an email at info at optionsplay.com. Uh, I'll send you the e info at optionsplay.com. And this way, we'll make sure that if there's anything that you're not accessing or if you don't know how to access it, we'll make sure that you get uh, the right uh, membership for it. Now, at the core of your membership, is the options play platform. This is the tool that allows anyone, regardless of whether you're a beginner or a, um, uh, whether you're a beginner or a experienced options trader to quickly uh, rem understand, you know, where the current market sits, where the directional view of that uh, stock or ETF is, and instantly be able to uh, apply and strategy on top of it and compare different strategies side by side. And most importantly, being able to use our PL simulator so that you can actually see how different strategies perform side by side. Now, one thing we did recently add is to the edit likes. When you select your strike prices on the edit likes, we added this last column here at the end, which is the delta. A lot of investors were asking us for the ability to quickly select a strike price based on not just premium, but also delta. So that was something we recently added and wanted to make sure everyone understood that when you're, you know, for example, if you like to select your strike prices based on delta, which is something that we do a lot, whenever we teach you how to select strike prices, we always tell you to use delta to select your strike prices. So we added the delta to the strike price selection so that you can quickly hone in on the exact delta that you're looking to buy or sell. So if you're looking to set up a credit spread, you can quickly search for the right deltas. If you're looking to create an iron condor or a straddle, whatever that is, you can quickly find the right strike prices based on best practices for each uh, specific um, strategy. So, but at the core of the platform, and I'll show you just quickly the platform, at the core of the platform, is it's really designed to quickly allow you to do PL simulation. That I think is one of the most powerful tools of our platform. So that regardless of what uh, ideas or views that you have on any stock, whether you're bullish on a stock and you're looking at three bullish strategies or bear strategies on any particular stock. I just have GE up because this is one of the stocks on my radar recently broke out above nine and a half. Looks like it's about to continue moving higher here. So for you're looking for a potential opportunity to go long on GE, being able to compare the stock to a call, to a vertical spread, and being able to compare and see how they perform is really important because from my perspective as an option strategist, the one thing that I can teach you uh, that I think that is more important than anything else is to understand your risk first. Understand what is at risk if this does not work out. Because when things work out, the skies are blue, right? But when things don't work out, that's when you can really get yourself into trouble. And that's what blows up accounts. That's what gets you into positions where you may have risked too much and you do uh, you know, unfortunate things to try to get yourself back to break even. And sometimes those are the scenarios that I see investors blowing up their accounts. So I always encourage investors before you get into any options position, 
understand what is your worst case scenario. What if you're flat out wrong on the fact that you think GE is going to go higher and this stock plummets, right? What if it goes back down to $7 instead of going up to 11? What do you have at risk? Understand that because, and, and make sure that you select the appropriate number of contracts here too. So, you know, we always tell investors, so let's say you, you have a, you know, $100,000 portfolio and you're willing to risk $2,000 on a trade, then you can trade 19 contracts of the call option or 25 contracts of the, uh, of the vertical spread. Understand that the stock declined to $7, $7, how much do you actually have at risk? Is it within your risk tolerance? Those are the important things to understand before you place that trade. Once you feel comfortable with that risk and say to yourself, okay, even in a worst case scenario, if I lost that $2,000, I can survive that because I'll still have $98,000 in my portfolio to continue trading. I'm okay with that. Now let's take a look at if I am right and the stock rallies up to $11, how much do I potentially potentially make, right? So here I'm risking $1,900 or roughly $2,000 to potentially make roughly $3,000, 156% return. Okay. Are those risk reward ratios comfortable for you? Is that, is, are you okay with those types of risk reward ratios? If you are, then go ahead and place that trade. But if you're not comfortable with the risk, then either reduce the number of contracts that you can trade or move on to the next trade. Understand what you're trading before you do it. That's how you prevent account blowups. That's how you prevent yourself from getting into a sticky situation. Um, and then once you're ready to trade, you hit the trade button. We'll show you how to enter the trade into your broker's platform. There's a strategy checklist to help you check for a few things that sometimes we miss, you know, especially if we're busy or if we have a lot of things that are on our plates, you know, the trend of the stock, the trend of the market, the earnings date, liquidity. These are all things that are really important for you to pay attention to before you place a trade. So these are the things that we scan for. Make sure you understand before you place that trade. So these are the things that we generally uh advocate for you to understand about our platform before you go on. Now, I have tons of education on the platform. So we'll talk a little bit about how to access that education because that is also a very important part of what you get with your membership. So I see a couple of things, you know, people saying that, you know, some people like, you know, combining the email, some people want um, them separate. So I'll send out a separate survey just to get a, a better feel for this. Um, someone saying the addition of Delta is very helpful. I'm glad that that was helpful. Um, how did you invoke the pop-up for Delta? So Robert, um, whenever you're selecting any strike prices and you go to modify, uh, once you hit the, the strike price drop down, this, which is right here, once you hit any strike price, you'll see the Delta. It's automatic, you don't have to do anything. So whenever you're selecting a strike price, right? So let's say I wanna buy a, a debit spread. I can use this to see where the one standard deviation move is. So the 11 strike is a 27 Delta. The 12 strike is a 16 Delta. And I can choose between that two. And I also have the one standard deviation mark so that it's easier for you to see what the one standard deviation move is for each given expiration date. So that's how you access Delta on the platform. Um, okay, so let's move on. So the platform, like I said, very important. But one of the things that we've been building lately are, are different reports that help you navigate uh, opportunities in this market. So the one thing that I will say, you know, I have spent many, many years as an options strategist. And the one thing that I think a lot of options traders struggle with is going from an, from an idea that you have on a stock to finding the optimal uh, option strategy on that stock. So you could have a stock that maybe maybe you saw it on the news, or maybe you uh, you know there was some some other service that provided you with a tip, you know, or someone else gave you a signal, or you have other services that you subscribe to that you have a directional view on that stock. Now, the problem with starting your research with a stock is the fact that you can have a great trade setup and then realize for at the, after you try to find a trade op opportunity that you couldn't find an option to trade on the opportunity itself. So maybe a stock is breaking out, you're looking at a chart and you say, this is a great stock. I think it's gonna continue breaking out. You bring up your options chain and then you realize there's not enough expirations or the strike prices just don't make sense or the spreads are really wide. If you've ever you know, experience that, please type one into the chat window where you have a great stock idea, but you couldn't really find a good options trade to make, 
Okay, I see a lot of ones because that's a story of my life. Um, great stock idea, couldn't find the options trade to me. I would say half of those times that I couldn't find an options trade, it really came down to liquidity where the stock was great, but the option was the spreads were really wide. You know, I'm looking at the sp uh, on the option it's trading at $3 by $5. That's something I'm generally not going to touch. So the reason that we created our liquidity report is so that you start your research only with the stocks that are most liquid. Because any stock that's on our liquidity list has already passed very stringent liquidity filters. That means, um, you know, and our liquidity uh, spreadsheet is filtered by most liquid to least liquid as you go down the list. And you also have important things that a lot of investors care about, which are IV rank, right? How, whether the implied volatility of option is relatively high or relatively low. And then what you look at, uh, you know, is earnings dates. You know, is, does something have an earnings coming up? Whoops, something have an earnings coming up? This is something generally look at. Um, so this is another way just to understand, you know, out of all the stocks that you can trade in the universe, where do you want to start? And this filters out roughly 95% of symbols. When you use the liquidity list, you've already filtered out 95% of optionable symbols. This way you don't waste a lot of time looking for ideas on stocks that are just not very liquid. Um, you know, you don't have to pull up an options chain, try to search for an idea before you are able to find that opportunity opportunity. And you can find the liquidity report at the bottom of your options play platform. There's a link that says liquidity. When you click on it, it'll show you the uh, liquidity uh, spreadsheet. A uh, liquidity spreadsheet is uh, here. Uh, the liquidity spreadsheet is updated twice a day, once in the morning after the open and once before the close. Uh, so right now, SPY, QQQ, Amazon, GLD, these are the most liquid names. And, you know, some of them that stand out for me are Amazon. Now, Amazon is a very high priced stock. Maybe some of you are priced out from trading Amazon, but it currently has an IV rank of 60%. So the volatility on this option is extremely high. If you're an option seller, this is what you're looking for. Um, now, maybe Amazon's out of your reach here. Uh, maybe you want to look at Apple. Apple's also pretty high here, 36%. Uh, you know, this is leading me to start selling some puts on Apple because of the high implied volatility. And there's no earnings coming up. So I'm not too concerned about an earnings event, you know, maybe moving the stock down substantially. Facebook, same thing, 45%, 69 days from expiration. You know, there are some, there are some pretty high implied volatility for some of these tech names, Google, Facebook, Adobe, um, you know, all of these have high implied volatilities. These are opportunities to sell. Walmart, Walmart just reported earnings and implied vol still at 41%. So these are some of the opportunities that I currently see in the broader markets just from looking at this alone. So this is something that you can also use to help you filter out a lot of the symbols here. Um, site to get to the liquidity. Yeah. So like I said, the liquidity uh, is available to you at the bottom of your options play platform uh, with the link here at the bottom. There's also going to be earnings and credit spreads, what I'm going to be talking about next, but these are all available to you on your options play platform at the very bottom. The next one I want to talk to you about is a cover call and cash secure put report. This is an opportunity report for those of you that like to generate income. Okay, cover calls, most of you are familiar with the strategy. What we cover are all S&P 500 stocks and all of the very liquid ETFs. If there are any liquid name, liquid stocks that are not in the S&P 500, those are also included in this report. So it really includes the S&P 500, all the liquid stocks and all the liquid ETFs. And what we do is we sort it by the highest annualized return. So we're basically searching for the, where the cover calls give you the highest yield and the largest downside protection. And it's always sorted for you based on the annualized return from highest to lowest. And you have pretty much all the things that you need to know, uh, the symbol, uh, the expiration date, the strike price, uh, the bid, the, the mid price and the bid price, the liquidity. I usually look for liquidity down the list. So that's how I looked at Tesla today. Um, that's why we use Tesla as our cover call opportunity. It was the first very liquid name here. Um, it tells you when the next earnings is, uh, the IV rank, 
uh, the liquidity and just and, and the yield analysis, right? So you're getting about four and a half percent static yield. That's the that's the downside protection that you're getting, and you're getting a forty seven percent annualized return on your on your um, on your covered call. So this is this is really easy for those of you that own stocks in your portfolio. You can quickly go down the list, find the stocks that you own, and see how much yield there is. If you like it, then you have exactly the expiration date and the strike price that you want to sell for that cover call. We do the same thing for cash secured puts. This is an, an opportunity again to help you acquire stocks at a large discount for the stocks that you want to own. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to quickly uh, find stocks that you might want to own in your portfolio and see how much of a discount you're actually getting on the uh, stock itself. So if, let's say if you want to buy space, um, you can sell the $23 uh, December 31st puts and receive about a 10% discount on the stock purchase of of space, right? Not, I'm not saying that you necessarily want to buy space, but you can look at the stock, identify stocks that you like, from a fundamental perspective or stocks that you want to own. And this will tell you how big of a discount you can receive by selling a put instead of placing a limit order on that, um, on that uh, stock. And, you know, worst case scenario, if the stock keeps rising and you don't get, uh, and, the, and you don't end up owning the stock, most of these have annualized returns on your cash that you're putting aside to sell that put at pretty high numbers from just a, a yield perspective, okay? So this is all designed to help you better understand how to access these, um, these uh, opportunities to utilize options to enhance your stock portfolio. So think about the stocks that you want to buy for your long-term portfolio. Selling cash secured puts are great ways to help you get a discount. Now, I see a lot of questions about how to access these reports. So again, uh, the liquidity, the earnings, and the credit spread report, which I'm going to come up and talk about next, are all accessible through your platform. The cover call and short put reports, we send those out every single Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But you, um, in our um, market outlook session, so during our market outlook uh, sessions, as you can see, uh, we have a in there, it'll see access income reports, cover call and short puts. You can access those in the 11 a.m. emails that we're sending out. Uh, you should have received an email today at 11 a.m. with how to access it if you're a member or if you're on a free trial. Last, next, I want to talk about the credit spread opportunity report. This is, a, this is a really important report for those of you that sell credit spreads because, as you know, when you're selling credit spreads, there are a lot of different credit spreads that you can sell. You, can, you have to pick your strike prices. You have to pick uh, your deltas. you got to make sure you pick the days to expiration. What we're doing is we're scanning for all of those combinations of expiration dates, strike prices, and finding you the credit spreads that have the best risk to reward, the highest amount of premium for the width of the vertical spread. The higher the premium you collect, the less risk you have. So everything of our credit spread report has risk to reward ratios that are at least greater than one third of the width. Whoops, at least one third of the width. One third of the width is the minimum that you want to collect on a credit spread. All of the our uh, opportunities are ones that collect more than one third. And this is updated every single hour. So this is a report that's updated every single hour. And what you get are lists of uh, uh, symbols that are where you have the highest amount of income at the very top of the list. As you go down to the list, at the bottom of the list, this is your bare minimum uh, that you're looking to collect. But generally speaking, where you want to do most of your research is up here. And generally, you know, we have everything that you need here, whether it's a bullish or bearish spread, the, the strike that you're selling, the strike that you're buying, the expiration date, how much premium are you collecting, what is the width of that vertical spread to give you a sense for the risk? And then the premium over width so that you get a sense for what's your risk to reward ratio. The higher this number, the better your risk to reward ratio. We also have IV rank here so that you can get a sense for the implied volatility. A lot of people like to sell uh, you know, uh, credit spreads on stocks with high IV like uh, Zoom here, but Zoom reports in 11 days. So perhaps that's one you want, want to avoid. Uh, Spotify. 
doesn't report for another 76 days, but has an IV rank of 52%, that's one that I would pay attention to. This is how we found Peloton yesterday, uh, was using this type of report. Uh, so we use these reports in our daily place when we find you opportunities. It helps you uh, quickly identify opportunities. And the credit spread report has already filtered out based on liquidity. So anything that you're seeing here has already passed our liquidity filter. It has an, an edge from a probability perspective. And what it has is a technical view as well. So most any stock here that's bullish are stocks that are relatively oversold. So stocks that have uh, oversold and has a high probability of reversing and moving higher. That Because that is the, the time that you want to sell those uh, credit spreads is when a stock is a bit oversold and is starting to turn around. Um, we're looking for technically stocks that are turning around and have a high probability of continuing moving higher. Um, so all of those things have already been built into this report. And then you have IV rank and earning state to help you further sort and potentially um, uh, you know, filter out some of the trade ideas. So this is all available to you on your options play platform. Again, at the bottom of your platform, liquidity, earnings, and credit spreads are all available to you at the bottom of your options play platform. Uh, Gary is saying, how do you calculate the width? The width is really easy. It's just the distance between the two strikes. So the distance between the buy strike and the sell price for width. calendar. Now, the earnings season is almost over. You know, about 90% of S&P 500 stocks have already reported. So this is not as relevant here for today. But when we kick off each earnings season, we always do an earnings um, webinar. Uh, we talk about the upcoming earnings season. We talk to you about the earnings calendar. You see me on CNBC um, during earnings season talking about ideas. This earnings calendar is how I found many of the ideas that I've used on CNBC this season. Whether we're talking about Snapchat, Wayfair, Cisco, Disney, some worked out, some didn't work out, but it's always using this report that I found those opportunities. Now, our liquidity, our earnings calendar is always using date and liquidity. So the dates go across the top and liquidity goes down the list. So the most liquid ones are the ones that are green at the top of the list, yellow or less liquid on yellow. And then the ones that don't have any color are the ones that are at the very bottom that are not liquid at all. So when you're trading options, I only focus on the green ones. If I can't find anything green ones, I'll occasionally go into the yellow ones. But generally speaking, I will only trade the green ones because these are the most liquid names from an options trading perspective. And we recently also added the before and mark after market indicator. So anything with an asterisk is before market. Anything without an asterisk is after market. This way you can quickly see on the 24th, uh, uh, Autodesk and uh, Gap reports after the market. Um, ADI, MDT plan all report before the market on that specific date. So the so the asterisk tells you whether it's before or after the market. Um, this is again designed to allow you to quickly navigate the hundreds of symbols that are reporting. You know, in the middle of the earnings season, just the few that you want to focus on. You know, in the when we're really in that bulk of those two to three weeks where there's a lot of earnings. You know, the top of the list is usually only. 10 symbols or so out of maybe 300 that are reporting that day. So that tells you which one of those 300 symbols you might want to focus on if you're trading options. So that covers the reports. What I want to talk a little bit now are the opportunities for you to learn. Because a big part of what we do here at Options Play is not just providing you with technology, providing you with reports and tools, but also teaching you how to trade options. And that is the core of you know, part of what I love to do, actually, I love teaching people how to utilize option strategies for their portfolio. So every single Thursday at 4.15 p.m., which is what you're on right now, you're on one of our options education webinars. Every single Thursday at 4.15 p.m., I show uh, users how to trade options with our weekly options education. Uh, we cover everything from beginner, intermediate, and advanced topics. And I think one of the different things about how I teach is that not only do I teach you the strategy, I teach you the concept, I teach you best practices, but I teach you how to utilize the options play platform to actually 
uh, execute or implement what you've learned. Because many times when you learn, you know, a cover call, but when you bring up your platform, what you learned and what you're seeing on your platform are two different things. So I want to make sure that you see how to implement what I'm teaching using the options play tool so that after you learn, you actually have access to the platform that you can use to analyze and implement the strategies that we teach. We do this every single Thursday or we teach for about 45 minutes and then we do a live Q&A session so that you can ask your questions as to how um, any questions that you have regarding options trading or what we're teaching you for today uh, for that day and all of this recorded on YouTube. Now, uh, you know, the, the link to sign up is trade.optionsplay.com slash learn. Everyone that's here on this webinar today, you're obviously already signed up, but if you're watching the recording, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can sign up for our Thursday Learn to Trade Education Series at trade.optionsplay.com slash learn. For those of you that are looking for the recordings, the best way to access them is go to youtube.com slash options play youtube.com slash options play. I highly recommend for you to click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell when you click on subscribe, because that means that every time we upload a new video, you'll get an email from YouTube that tells you that we've uploaded a new video. When we go live streaming, you'll get a notification to know that you were live so that you can join us on those live streams, or you can make sure that you have access to all of our latest recordings. And we're putting out more content these days on that, on that platform. So it's a great way to stay on top of the things that we are offering. But for those of you that are looking to learn, and I know many of you are looking to learn, even for those of you that are very experienced traders, like I said, I think there are plenty of things for even experienced traders to learn. This is how you can stay on top of the markets and understand you know, how we're utilizing tools like Options Play to help you analyze and understand the trades that you're making. And we're always making enhancements to the platform. So it's also a great way for you to see how changes in the platform help you navigate and, and analyze trades even better. And then lastly, our market outlook series. This is this is something that I've come to enjoy doing since, you know, we started this during the pandemic because there was a lot of market volatility, a lot of investors asking us, you know, what's going on? How do I stay on top of the markets? So this is the outlook series that we created as a result of that. And it really has stuck because so many of you are, are joining for, the, for joining us for those sessions. So many of you have uh, provided us a lot of great feedback on how to improve those sessions and make sure that they're, they're, they're useful for you. So every Tuesday and Friday mornings, I get up at 9 a.m. and I show you my charts. You know, I, I, I get up pretty early. I look at all my charts. I, I take snapshots of them to give you a better understanding as to how I'm viewing the broader markets, how I'm viewing whether I'm bullish or bearish, what levels I'm paying attention to, uh, fixed income markets, commodity markets, alternative markets, sectors, trade ideas. These are all available to you, both my technical research and the economic research that I read, I make available to you and I express them to you and, and show you how I'm looking at the markets. And this is something I think has been very uh, useful for a lot of traders to get a better understanding as to just where the current market is. We don't really talk a lot about options on that. We really talk more about the markets there. And we really talk about whatever is moving. Right, so it's a very fluid um, session. It's not very rigid. We really try to just cover what's important, what's relevant for that specific few days, um, giving you also more of a macro view beyond just our daily plays, which gives you a specific stock view. We look at that macro view, and these are all recorded for you as well. I know a lot of you uh, are out in the West Coast, and at 6 a.m. is difficult. You know, I was doing these sessions and out when I was out there on the West Coast. I was getting up at 4 a.m. to put together these charts. I know it's difficult to do. Uh, I know some of you are in Hawaii, which is even more difficult at 3 a.m. So these are recorded and they generally are still relevant when you get up later in the day at 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. to watch these sessions uh, so that you could also access them at youtube.com slash options play. Now to sign up for the weekly sessions, if you're not already on here, is to go to trade.optionsplay.com slash weekly. Again, Tuesday and Friday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, you know, you get to see my charts, you get to see how I'm looking at the markets, and we really try to keep it as, 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 um, as relevant as possible to the current market. So sign up for that at trade.optionsplay.com slash weekly. It's a great way for, for you guys to stay on top of, of the current markets. Now, 
I also wanted to give you a little glimpse into some of the things that me and my team are currently working on that we're about to launch. You know, some of the things that a lot of you have asked for. Now, I will say, you know, a lot of people have been asking us about the debit spreads. You know, we tried to build the debit spread report, but it just doesn't quite work out because number one, the criteria for buying automated debit spreads is not as is not as simple as the same thing as automated credit spreads because you can sell credit spreads when you have a loose directional view. You can't buy debit spreads unless you have a very strong directional view, and it's very difficult to algorithmically just find stocks that you know are going to make a big move without having to do fundamental research on. That's why we've really struggled with putting together a debit spread. Debit spread is really something that is still a very manual process for me and my team to put together because we really have to find opportunities that we believe there's a catalyst for a strong move. A lot of times that's earnings driven, like the ones that we did on Snapchat, the ones we did on Wayfair. These are catalyst events. Those are the opportunities to buy debit spreads. So we haven't worked on, you know, we have worked on the debit spread, but we don't have one that it's automated that we want to publish. But do we do have one that we have already worked on that we do want to publish, which is the straddle income report. So this is for those of you that like to trade butterflies and iron condors. I get a lot of questions about butterflies and iron condors. So what we did is we found stocks that have the best straddle income opportunities because you can turn those straddles into butterflies um, or you can turn those strangles into butterflies, uh, into iron condors. So the at the money uh, straddle report gives you an idea as far as what stocks where the at the money strike price collects a very large percentage of the stock price in terms of a straddle. So um, HPR, I'm not familiar with this stock, it's priced at uh, $10 here. So this is one that I'm going to avoid. Let's look at something that's more relevant here. Let's look at NEO. NEO is currently trading at $40, $48. The $48 straddle is collecting 29% of the underlying stock price. And the IV rank here is pretty low at only 16%. So, you know, IV rank here is pretty low. Uh, that's why, you know, maybe that's one that I would skip. But VXX or Zoom, you know, I'm not a big fan of trading straddles myself, but some of you do. So I did want to create this report for those of you that do like to sell straddles or for those of you that want to turn these into butterflies. But this is where you start your research to see where are some opportunities to sell butterflies or sell straddles or potentially turn these into iron condors. Um, but knowing which symbols to do them on is really why we created this uh, report. And lastly, another one that we get a lot of questions on is unusual options volume. So we've been looking at unusual options volume for a while, and we wanted to create a report to give you a sense for what stocks are currently um, trading a lot of volume. So this is something that we've been doing. We've been tracking 21 day average volumes and we've been comparing what's trading today, what the volume is today compared to the last 21 days and giving you an idea as far as what symbol uh, you know, which expiration date, what strike price, which call or put seems to have the highest amount of volume and giving you a sense for whether the imbalance or in terms of the high volume is skewed towards the call side or the put side. So for example, FXB traded about 5,000%, almost 6,000% of the average daily volume. Most of that is concentrated in the December 123 call op, uh, put options. And as you can see, uh, here, I'm sorry, the put options, uh, it traded, uh, you know, puts outweighed calls about 162 times versus calls. So this is just, you know, an example of saying, okay, there maybe there's some, some bearish action here for FXB. Uh, HPR, 4,000% above its average daily volume. Now, the volume wasn't particularly strong. There's only 455 contracts. So this is one that is not as relevant. Uh, the next one, AEP puts traded about a thousand, 10 times the average daily volume, uh, the February $75 puts, uh, 4,400 con 4, contracts traded. And as you see, the imbalance here is that there are way more puts than calls traded on this particular name. This, so this is just a report that we started putting together to help you identify where there's been a lot of put or a lot of put call buying or, or selling on a specific name and giving you a sense for how much volume there was behind that move so that you can do a little bit more research. So these are some of the things that me and my team are currently working on that are are coming at the end of 2020, uh, just to give you a glimpse into some of the features that we're going to be launching here in December. Um, uh
when, how often will these be updated during the day? Uh, so the straddle income report will be the same as the credit spread once an hour. The uh, unusual volume will be updated currently once every 15 minutes. We may change that to be a little bit more frequent, uh, but right now it's published every single 15 minutes uh, or so. So that just gives you a glimpse into what is coming up here in December. So with that, you know, that wanted to share with you here today. I just want to remind everyone tomorrow morning, we're not doing our normal Friday market outlook session. We are doing a members only session tomorrow morning where we're doing a rapid fire analysis session. This is where you as a member, you can submit symbols. We're going to look at those symbols together and we are just going to take your symbols and look at them based on my views. So you'll be able to submit an idea. I'll look at my charts. I'll show you what my views are and it'll just be a session where you guys can, uh, where we can look at the symbols that you guys wanted for me to, to research and take a look at. Um, so that's tomorrow morning. I, I really look forward to having many of you as members uh, joining us tomorrow morning. And for those of you that you know are currently members, I just want to do a, a big, big thank you for you guys to support us and allowing us to continue doing this and allowing me to 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 do what I love. I love teaching. I love showing you uh, the markets. This is what I've been doing for 15 years. I love building these tools to help you as traders because it helps me to identify opportunities. So this is something that I really enjoy. And I really want to thank our members for supporting us and allowing us to continue, continue doing this. So if you are currently on a free trial and you want to consider supporting us, you can sign up at trade.optionsplay.com slash member. I hope that today gives you a good sense for what you get as part of your membership. You know, sometimes we get questions as to what do you actually get. So today, hopefully I gave you a good comprehensive view as to just exactly all the different resources that we have here at, uh, at your disposal, what things we're working on here for the future. And if you don't have an, a trial yet, you can sign up at optionsplay.com for a free 30-day trial. That will give you access to everything that I showed you here today. So if you're just in the learning process, whether you need education, whether you need a platform to help you analyze, or you're looking for some opportunities with those reports, you know this is all available to you as part of that free trial at optionsplay.com. So with that, what I'll do is I'll open this up for q and I know there are a lot of questions. So there's a Q&A a section and there's a chat window. If you don't mind, please type your questions into the Q&A window and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for here through that session. Um, you know, there was a couple of comments from saying that people saying that, um, you know, you were a member, but you're not getting certain things. Uh, so send me an email at info at optionsplay.com. If you're a member and you're not receiving certain things, send me an email with your uh, email address and we'll take a look at that and making make sure that you're turned on for the right things. Uh, Terry is saying, Tony, am I correct to say your service is 80% credit spreads? I would say the daily play certainly right now favors credit spreads, but that's because of the volatility environment that we've been in has favored credit spreads. You know, if the volatility environment changes to favor buying debit spreads, we will evolve with that. And that's something that I keep, you know, members aware of during our Tuesday and Friday morning sessions. We've recently talked about a shift in volatility regime. But this shift still favors credit spreads, still favors selling. We're just not getting a much, as much premium, but still we're favoring credit spreads. But you're right. Since the pandemic, it's favored selling rather than buying. Christine is saying, hi, Tony. I started using shorter term management triggers to take profit, closing at 10% of max gain at three days, 20% max gain at six days. My understanding is that these triggers beat the average rate of return. Do you think I'm doing myself uh, by managing and not waiting until 21 days or 50 days? So Christine, this is something that Tom and I actually talked about here. Uh, for those of you that joined me last week, last Tuesday with Tom Sosnoff, you know, we generally agree that it's never a bad idea to take profits, but you don't also don't want to, uh, you know, if you're going to take profits early, you also better cut your losses early as well. You know, what doesn't work is if you take your profits early and then still cut your losses at the same place that you normally would if you held your, your take profits to 50%. So if you're going to make adjustments on one side, you also have to make adjustments on the other side. Uh, the Greeks should, should I be concerned if I don't understand every aspect of them? So Jeff, you know, if you don't understand the Greeks completely, start with Delta and start with Theta. You know, understand those two first. If you can understand those two, uh, you've, you've, that's 80%, that's 80% of the battle. Okay. So 
you don't have to understand all of them completely, but understand delta and understand theta. Without those two, it's difficult to trade options, in my opinion. Uh, could you give an example of 10% of the quoted price? I think I, I, I think I just I talked about that with the Peloton example here. Um, a lot of people saying that there's a lot of background noise here today. Is there more background noise today than every other day? Because I'm sitting in the same room that I normally sit in. I, you know. Um, okay, I'll look into that. Maybe there's something wrong with my headset here today. Um, Oh, I know what happened. I apologize. I think the, the sound quality is probably much better now, right? I apologize. So the microphone was not picking up my AirPods. They were picking up the speakers. So I apologize for that. I do live in New York City and there is a train outside. So again, I apologize. Um, on the options play, where do you specific where do you specify the open and exit points? So Frank, that's in the email that we send you every single day. In the email, you there's a link in the in opening transactions. So uh, let me pull up here. Uh, the question from Frank was, where are the entry and exit points? So when you get the email, you'll see a link that says view the trade itself. Uh, when you click on that, that will tell you exactly your entry point. And then when there's a closing. A transaction will tell you exactly what price to close your transaction at. So the email at 6 a.m. will always tell you that. How often is Delta cal computed? It's calculated on, on, on the fly. So it's always in the most recent um, uh, price quote that you're getting. Is there a way to filter the trades by score? Um, so you don't filter out the trades by score because the score is only the risk to reward ratio of the option. You know, because the trade is the, the trade. You can trade lots of different options on it. And whatever option you choose, each option has a different score. That's why you don't filter out the trade based on the score itself, because you could always adjust the option and find different options that give you the better score based on your outlook. When doing multiple contracts on the same stock, do you ever do different legs, i.e. different strike prices or expiration dates, or do you do that if the trade goes against you? If you're doing multiple, well, ah, so I think Mark is asking if, let's say, we were entering a trade, let's say we were entering this uh, January 9 by 11 call vertical, uh, would I enter multiple, con when I'm entering multiple contracts, would I do, you know, five contracts at this expiration and strike price and five contracts at another expiration and strike price? Mark, I would say that that's rare for me, unless I'm legging into a trade, then I may enter half my position now. And as the trade goes in my favor, enter perhaps another half. Then at that point, I might adjust it. I don't do that very often, but occasionally I do. Um, it's not something I do very often though. Uh, when you hit the trade button, can you print the trade? Uh, yeah, I mean, I usually just copy and paste this. So I many times I will just literally copy and paste this somewhere else for myself. You can also save a trade. Oh, this is another feature that I think a lot of uh, members or even um, uh, you know free trial or members aren't aware of. But let's say I wanted to save this particular trade. Uh, when I click on the blue share button, um, I can actually click on this link button here on the right and copy the clipboard. When you copy a trade, this is actually how I send trades to you guys on the daily play. Um, once you do that, when you go to your profile, you can go to your uh, share trades and all of the trades that, you, uh, that you've saved are here. And what you can do is you can click on it and see how they've performed since you've saved them. So this is almost like a paper trading feature where you can take a trade that you're looking at, save it, and then come back later and see how that trade is performing. So here's the Peloton trade from yesterday. As you can see, the current trade is up $10 on this particular trade because we sold it for 370 yesterday. It's now trading at 360, that's a $10 profit. This is one way that you can uh, paper trade. Um, so again, how to do that? Whenever you're looking at any trade, if you wanna paper trade it, you click on the blue share button, which is right here on the upper right-hand corner of any PNL chart. When you click on that, uh, you can click on the copy to clipboard uh, button. And when you do that, that will save the trade. Uh, and then you go to your profile under save trades. All of your trades are here. Uh, you know, so this is the GE one that I just trade. That's the Peloton one from, from yesterday, the Clorox trade, the, the MasterCard trade, the Intel trade. They're all here because these are the trades that I have shared with you during our daily plays. 
any status on the liquidity score for stocks or ETF? Ralph, I'm not sure what you mean by the status on the liquidity score. I hope I showed you how to, how to access it. How to read the color coded on the liquidity and volatility report. Um, uh, let's see, the liquidity report. So, you know, uh, the higher, the, the red means the higher the IV, that's all it is. The green means very low IV. So if you're selling, you wanna sell high IV. When you're buying, you wanna generally find stocks that have low IV. And on the, uh, what is it? The volatility report. Oh, I think, I think we've already covered that. Okay. Um, please explain the different color bars next to the stock on the liquidity chart. Please explain. I think I just, just I think I just explained that. Will there be a replay of this webinar? Yes, all of our webinars are recorded. Uh, what do you do when the mid-range price of a trade is higher or lower than the corresponding theoretical value? Um, what do you do when the mid-range price of the trade is higher or lower than the corresponding theoretical value? Ben, uh, you know, uh, first of all, I, I would I would ask you where do you get your theoretical value? Um, because I would say that most retail platforms don't have what I consider a strong theoretical value calculation. Um, you know, this is something that market makers spend millions of dollars working on, their secret sauce of, of calculating theoretical values. It's not something that's easily, they, they don't make public, it's not published. So when you have a mid price that's far away from theoretical value, I'd be more concerned about your theoretical value calculation than the mid price calculation. I would be hard pressed to say that the mid price is a better theoretical value than whatever theoretical value, you know, calculation that your platform spits out to be perfectly honest. Uh, Betty saying, great work, Tony. Is it possible to analyze a play on VIX itself? So Betty, we're currently in the process of adding SPX and VIX. Um, it's ungodly expensive in, in just carrying those two symbols. Um, the, you know, we have to pay a substantial amount of money to offer that and we have to pay per user on top of that. Um, for access to just the data on those two symbols. So that is something that we're working on, that we're working with the exchanges to, uh, um, to, to offer by the end of this year, but it's currently that's something that we don't offer just yet. Uh, Robert saying, do we prefer high numerical or low numerical options in IV rank? So Robert, that depends on what you're looking for. If you're selling you generally want to sell stuff with high IV. So if we're selling a credit spread, if we're selling a straddle, uh, you want to sell, sell something with high IV. If you're buying an option like a call or a debit spread, you generally want lower IV. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't sell something with low IV or buy something with high IV. It's just that high IV is most optimal for selling and low IV is most optimal for buying. Do we prefer low ranking? Yep, uh, Robert, yes, you are correct. Are we supposed to own the stock in order to sell a cover call? Yes, for you to sell a cover call, you must own the stock. Otherwise, you know, you don't look at any symbol on the cover call report that you don't own. If you don't own the cover call, uh, if you don't own the stock, you can't sell a cover call on that stock. Uh, don't see an app in the iPhone store, Robert. So that's actually something that we're working on is our you know, mobile development team that's gonna help us build an, an iPhone app for this. Who creates and updates the report? It's all automated. It's all the reports are automated uh, every single day, um, either hourly or daily, depending on the type of report. You know, the cover call and short put reports are updated uh, daily. The credit spread reports are updated every single hour. These are all fully automated, so no one's actually doing it manually. Uh, you know, my, Michelle is asking, is Options Play planning to add a vertical debit spread suggestion? So, you know, this is something that we've been trying to do, right? So debit spreads, like I said, you know, debit spreads are for more for when you have a strong catalyst view. So that's why, um, you know, we have not built a, a debit spread report, not because we haven't tried, it's just that it's hard to automate when we think the stock's going to make a big move and when it might be suitable to buy that debit spread. What are the titles at the top of the columns under the date in the earnings spreadsheet? Um, the question is, what are, what are these? Um, this is just telling you which sector is dominating the earnings calendar for that day. Um, so for example, 
um, and, and this many times is based on the number of symbols that are in here. So on this day, you have a lot of apparel companies or footwear companies. On this day, you have internet software companies. Here you have precious metals, auto parts, uh, major banks, um, depending on which sector is dominating the earnings calendar on that day. Generally speaking, you know, different sectors kind of have concentrated uh, when they generally report. So for example, big box retailers are later in the season. Technology stocks are, you know, banks are early in the season. This just gives you an idea as far as, you know, which sectors are, are kind of reporting that particular week. Um, any reason why you don't have a list with bull call spreads and if the stock is oversold, do you prefer a bull put spread over a bull call spread? Yeah, um, because a bull call spread requires, in my opinion, more of a catalyst versus a bull put spread just requires it to be oversold. Because when something is oversold, that doesn't mean that it's going to reverse higher. It just means that it has a low probability of continuing to move lower. So as long as it stays sideways, if it moves higher, great. But if it moves sideways or if it moves just a little bit lower, you can profit in all of these three scenarios in one, two, and three in the bull put spread. But if you, if you buy a bull call spread, only this scenario uh, profits. These two will actually lose money. That's why it's so much harder, in my opinion, to automate bull call spreads rather than bull put spreads. Is it possible to add a legend to these reports? Easy to identify what everything means. Um, Savan, I mean, all of these reports have labels as to what each one of these things mean. If you have a specific report in mind that you feel that we don't have legends, um, let me know. Uh, could you please just have a page on the app for when reports are updated? Um, when they... Um, okay, great, uh, great feedback. Someone wanted, uh, you know, a page as to when the reports are updated. I'll, I'll send out an email with um, information on that. Do you also post the slides of the presentation? Yes. So in every single YouTube video, uh, when you ever you click on a YouTube video, uh, the slides are always in the description. So if you go to the description, as you can see, there's always a link here for every single YouTube video. Click on that link. And that will always give you a, a link to the slide. So we always post the slides with every single uh, YouTube video. Um, great question. Uh, David is saying, how do you track your positions? Um, so David, you know, I, I, my brokerage firm is what I use to track my position. So I use Thinkorswim. Um, obviously everyone has their own brokerage firm. So sometimes you might have uh, different brokerage firms. Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to speak to your specific broker firm and what they may or may not have. Uh, unfortunately, David, AJ saying, thanks. If the spread contract is not traded as one transaction and later on both the transactions are completed, will the platform net them out or does it only do once both? Um, AJ, if you're referring to your brokerage platform, um, you know, most brokerage platforms, whether you leg into a spread or if you trade the spread as a single trade, will report them as a single as a spread. So you should have the ability to combine the spreads, even if you leg into them separately. Uh, with margin requirement, yes, specifically margin requirement. If you if you leg into it, once you've legged into the trade, the margin requirement will be the same as a spread. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Doris is saying, will credit spread report become available for Canadian markets? Doris, that was actually one of the things that is on my quant teams list this week. Uh, we will get a Canadian credit spread report out before 2021. Um, that is uh, something that we're working with TMX on. Can we use the straddle report to buy straddles, Betty. So yes, you can use the credit of uh, the straddle report to buy straddles. You would simply look for the bottom of the screen. So as you can see here, um, uh, UUP, HYG, TLT, GLD, straddles are extremely cheap as a percentage of the stock price. So as long as the stock makes a move greater than that amount before the expiration date, then you will be able to uh, be profitable on that trade. I do want to make sure that I get the um, survey out to you guys. Uh, Betty saying, is the best bet with the straddle report to pick the ones with better width at with the least IV rank? 
Um, generally speaking, most people use the Shrouded Report with the ones with the highest IV rank and the highest premium uh, the highest premium versus the stock price, because you're generally selling straddles. You generally don't buy straddles. Buying straddles, I will tell you in the long run, not an effective strategy. Um, I don't know of anyone, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know of a single person that is successful buying straddles in the long run. It's just not a strategy that is very successful for most investors. Um, you can occasionally make money using a straddle, uh, buying straddles, but it's very rare. Uh, I generally have found to make money buying straddles um, because you're basically paying time premium twice and it's very difficult to overcome double the time premium. It's very difficult to overcome the single time premium. To overcome a double time premium is difficult to do. Um, so with respect to the daily play and the market observations email, um, you know, I'm asking for some feedback. I posted a link into the chat window if you guys could please give us a little feedback as to the uh, daily play and the market observation emails that we send out, it'd be greatly uh, appreciated. We just want to understand how people prefer to receive that information uh, so that we can deploy it in the least number of emails as possible. The options play send trades to Tastyworks platform. So we don't have an integration with Tastyworks. That is something I'm talking to Tom and his team about, but currently I don't have an integration. Any progress on being able to input and track your own trades? That's also one of the things that we're looking to uh, launch here in 2021 is the ability to automatically pull in your portfolio and populate the options play portfolio tool. All education is on YouTube or something special on the site as well. So Sanjay, right now, all of the education is on YouTube. It's the easiest way for us to uh, easily upload everything and share everything. We are looking to uh, bring it into the Options Play platform next year, um, but it is something that is all on YouTube today. Um, so please post, if you don't mind, click on the link in the chat window and just give us your feedback as to your reviews as to how you prefer we send you our daily play and our market observations. Uh, Barry is saying, hi, Tony, is there a time of day you like to enter your orders? I generally like to enter my orders at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. If I'm either entering or closing, I'll usually do it at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day. Uh, no, I generally don't use the average daily trading range or anything like that. You know, I, I use my charts. I use daily charts um, and that's it. Uh, can I trade futures with options play? Richard, no, you cannot trade futures with options play right now, but it is something that we are talking to the small exchange about right now in terms of their new small contracts. I think it's a very interesting product for... Um, retail investors to see their, their futures. You know, my background is actually in futures trading. So I, I'm interested in teaching about futures trading, but it's, it's not something that we're doing at the very moment. When do you recommend buying vertical spreads with max 60 days to expiration? Why do you look at fundamentals? Um, you know, JB, I, I think it's always difficult to ignore the fundamentals. The fundamentals is never my number one thing that I look at, but I generally don't like to trade something where the fundamentals are in the exact opposite of my bullish or bearish view, right? So if I'm bullish on a stock, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't provide me any. Uh, uh, it's it's not good for me to go bullish on a stock that has a a, a bad fundamental um, outlook, where the fundamentals are in the wrong direction, or vice versa. There's just no reason for me to do that. I always have to have. I always like to have a fundamental gut check. Is there a way to save or keep your modified view of an option when you toggle between income and trade views? Um, sure. Uh, at the moment, there isn't, but I will consider that as a way to help you uh, better navigate the platform. Uh, how important are the score numbers when selecting bullish or bearish strategies? The score, the score is not, I mean, it's important, but it's not the only thing. Just because you have a low score doesn't mean you can't trade it. And just because it has a high score means that you should trade it. It just tells you whether the risk reward is skewed in your favor, but that doesn't mean that you're definitely going to profit or you're definitely going to lose money. It just means that the the probabilities are either skewed in your favor or skewed against you. But some things can be skewed against you and you can still make money. And other things you can, the skew could still be in your favor and you can still lose money. That's the thing to understand about those scores. They're important, but they're not an end all be all. 
please train on some straddles and butterflies, Jacob. Okay, I will make sure that we add that when we add the straddle report. Um, managed accounts, will this be available soon? So Robert, I don't have any intentions of ever managing accounts to be perfectly honest. So I don't anticipate that that's something we'll be adding. Uh, does Options Play have their own trading platform? No, we're, we're broker agnostic. You can use our tools with any brokerage firm. Uh, Mark, have you back tested the credit spread report to determine probability of expiring worthless? Mark, I mean, the, pow the, the probability of expiring worthless of a credit spread is not really relevant because we don't hold it to expiration. So you can back test it. I think you'll find that you're going to end up around 30, uh, around 70%. Um, but, uh, you know, from my perspective, that's not really useful because you're not holding to expiration. Um, Fernando, this is something that we are working on, and I promise I will update you when we do have that. Uh, Jacob is saying, Tony, the spreads many times don't exceed 88 score. You've indicated many times you like to be over 90. Um, so when you say many, the spreads many times don't exceed 88, uh, which spreads are you referring to, Jacob? Thomas is saying, I looked at your GE you mentioned. Why would you take a vertical? I, I, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, I was just pulling out GE as an example. I was not saying that you should trade GE. I didn't even look at the trade. So again, what I'm saying here is not a recommendation to trade. I was just using GE as an example to show you the platform. I wasn't show, showing you GE as an example of a trade. Uh, Charles is saying, on Tom Sassanel's program, he talked about repairing credit spreads by selling calls or rolling the puts. At what point does he do this? At 50% loss? Um, so Charles, generally speaking, we tend to find that, you know, once you've exceeded 50%, um, we measure, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the gains and losses of a credit spread based on the credit that you receive. So if you've, if you've lost 50% of the credit that you receive, that is a time that you can start looking at re potentially repairing a credit spread here. Uh, you, 50 to 100% is that range that you generally might start uh, working on a repair, if you will. I wouldn't quite call it a repair because I don't think that's the right word for you know selling a, a call spread on a put spread that's going south. Um, it's really just collecting more premium and giving you an opportunity to potentially get out at a smaller loss. Um, I, you know, that, that's, I think, a more accurate description. Uh, Keith is saying, looking at put credit spreads, the equity price against the sell strike, there are, they are sure close, so you better feel good about owning the stock. So Keith, you know, that's a common misconception. Again, uh, Keith is mentioning here on credit spreads, and he was saying that the sell strike is very close to the stock price. And he was saying, you better be comfortable with owning the stock. Keith, we, uh, you know, we've been selling credit spreads for, I don't know how long now. I don't think I've seen a single assignment on any of the strike prices on any of this, uh, any of the, uh, on the uh, credit spreads that we've sold because we never hold them to expiration. We never even get close to expiration, which is why assignment risk is not something we worry about when selling a credit spread like this. Assignment risk is only something that you have to worry about if you're holding this in the last week into expiration. If you're, if you're rolling it three weeks from expiration like we are, you will almost never get assigned early on a, on a credit spread here. Uh, how can how can you show an options play platform how do you bold put spread sure uh, the question is how do you set up a bold put spread on uh on um on options play so this is something we showed you before right i think i forget if we were using peloton or if we're using no i think we used um i think we used zoom here before no which one did we use I forget. Um, I, let's just say we're looking at Zoom here. Zoom's trading at 414 right now. We're selling the 412 and a half, 340 um, uh, bull put spread on Zoom. So let's take a look at that. So we'll look at Zoom. And what we do is we click on modify. We'll use our strategy constructor. We'll select a bullish strategy and we'll sell a short put vertical. Now, we were looking at the December 31st. 
we're looking at selling the 412, which is the 44 delta, and we're buying the 340s, which is the 20 deltas. Um, and this you can see this is how you set up a bull put spread using options play and then you can use the PL simulator to simulate how this strategy compares to buying a call to buying a call spread or any other two strategies you want to set up but that's how you use it you click on modify you use the strategy constructor you select the sentiment in this particular case you're looking for a bull put spread so then you would then uh, sell the put bull short put spread here uh, someone said Democratic president will cause market going down after election. Republican president will boost the market. Is that true? Nan, I'm not sure where you got that data from. I don't think that that's true. Um, you know, I, I think that's been pretty much clearly debunked that, you know, Republican, Democratic presidents, markets go up under both types of administration. Uh, there are differences in terms of which sectors tend to outperform in one, uh, one administration versus other, but the sample sizes are so small, in my opinion, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, hi, Tony, thank you for the webinar. I have a question on day trading. I hear a lot of people on the internet say a very high percentage, 90% or more of day traders are not profitable. What are your thoughts on day trading? I would say that the stats on that are probably not far off from the truth. I don't think 90% is the number. The number is probably closer to about 70%. The thing about day trading is that very few day traders are actual professional day traders. Most day traders or trade traders who you know attempted to try to day trade most of them are not trading with a million dollar portfolio which realistically is what you need to to do it for a living right because you know you can't day trade with a ten thousand dollar portfolio you're never going to be able to make a living doing that um but in order for you to day trade you need to sit there all day uh, i mean unless you work i don't know at nights and you day trade during the day as your second gig um you know most traders are not well capitalized enough to actually make money, make enough of a living from trading. So, you know, I think that statistic is extremely biased and skewed, in my opinion. I had no idea there were important links on the bottom of your main screen and you need to click on the arrow at the bottom. Oh, Mitchell, I'm, I'm glad that you learned something new. Uh, Mark asking what my thoughts are on PLTR. Mark, join us for our members only session tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. And that's all we're going to do. You give, you pick the symbol, I'll do the analysis. Uh, Roger is saying your credit spread strike prices are always very close to the current stock price. That doesn't leave much room for the stock to move against the trade. Roger, that's the whole point. The whole point is to generate as much premium as possible possible so that you have as big of a buffer as possible to to um to deal with a loss here the other thing is you know this is this is where where you know whatever you think is the best trade um most things about options trading is very counterintuitive. You know, a lot of people will say well why would you sell this at the money call option here you know uh, you know, uh, here 412, 340, why not just do something like this? Give yourself a lot of room. The answer is yes, you give yourself a lot of room. But at the end of the day, when the trade goes against you, it, it doesn't matter if the, whether you have strike prices near the stock price or if you have the strike price further away from the stock price. When the stock goes against you, you're going to lose money on the trade. The question is, how much do you truly have risk? Right. So the further out of the money you go, the more risk you actually are taking. So, yes, you have less room, but you're taking on less risk. What's more important to you, having more room or taking on less risk? As a trader, for me, it's always going to be taking on less risk. So when I trade that 412, uh, 340, I'm taking on $4,300 worth of risk. When I go further out of the money, I'm taking on more risk because I'm collecting less premium. It's the same with. I'm collecting less premium. That means I'm taking on more risk. So don't confuse one with the other. Who cares how much room you have? Think about how much risk you're taking. That is way more important than how much room you have. Um, you know, and how much room you have comes down to your analysis, right? Be pick, be picky about where you sell your credit spreads. Only sell credit spreads that you know on stocks that are severely oversold that have a high probability of a bounce. But 
Do it when you have the least amount of risk. That's how you protect yourself in the long run. You don't protect yourself by giving yourself more room. Just because you give yourself more room doesn't mean the stock won't go against you. If the stock is going to go against you, it's going to go against you. It doesn't matter how much room you have. But the more the more the less room you have, the less risk that you're actually taking. Am I the only one having problems accessing the options play platform? Um, Jay, if you can send me an email at info at optionsplay.com, I'm happy to take a look at that for you. Uh, do you have instructions on how to close out your positions? Should you use a limit price? Yes, you should always close out your positions using a limit price as well. Uh, Matthew, the delta on the Canadian stocks is coming. Um, we just added it to the U.S. stocks, and it is coming for the Canadian options as well. How do you go back to the daily ideas once you close the pop-up? Um, great question. So, uh, you know, first of all, you can always just reload the page. But at the bottom of the page, right now, we don't have a pop-up. But if we did have a pop-up, you'll get a little megaphone here at the bottom of your screen. When you click on the megaphone, it'll bring the pop-up back. Can you give an example when you would add a stock leg? What is the combined strategy called? Um, Tom, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Add a stock leg to what? I typically don't see five trades a week, usually two to three. Um, I, I don't think I ever said five trades a week. I said we send out a, an idea five days a week. It could be an opening trade or a closing trade. So that's why you average two to three new trades, new opening trades a week. We, don't, we can't just keep adding new positions without closing them. So that's why you're averaging two to three a week. Can you briefly explain negative delta and theta? Um, so negative delta just means that it's a strategy that makes money if the stock goes down. And negative theta is a money that makes money as long as time goes uh, forward. So as time goes on, you either make or lose money. So that's negative or, or, or positive theta. And delta just means whether you make money if the stock goes higher or lower. And negative delta means you make money if the stock goes lower. Uh, will we receive the rapid fire session recording? If you're a member, yes, we will send out the rapid fire session recording to you. Is there a call in number or email if I have a specific question? So William, we offer uh, you know, support by email. You can actually contact us directly on the platform by clicking on the questions ask us uh, section. When you click on that, you'll be able to send us an email or send us a message and we'll be able to re reply to you by, by that process. Stock seeing short put income report. Um, not sure what you mean by that. When you turn a big profit in a few days, should you exit the trade or stay for the three weeks you recommend? No, if a trade goes in your favor very quickly, take profits very quickly. You should not hold on to a trade um, if you've made profits very quickly. Um, where can I access a recording of this seminar? We will email it to you as long as you're registered for this event, or again, you can follow us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell. Um, and that will, um, uh, that will provide you with the ability to see all of our recordings. Trevor saying, how do you feel about credit spreads on OEX? OEX is in as a S&P 100 index option. I don't have anything for or against it. You know, if you like trading OEX, it's just not as liquid, um, but you absolutely can. Uh, Mark is saying, have you done or will you be doing any webinars on portfolio management in terms of how much of your portfolio is in play at any one time. So Mark, we've done uh, recordings of this. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Um, it's, it's under our, um, trading psychology and risk management uh, section or our webinar on, on trading psychology and risk management. So I have covered that. Uh, yes, again, we are working on that mobile app. Does Options Play help with managing options positions? Uh, so this is something that we're also currently working on. The mobile app and the ability to pull in your portfolios is some of our top priorities here at the moment. 
for credit spreads, most have December 2020 as expires. Would it be possible to explain certain rules applied if simple enough? So, Byung, we actually have a whole webinar explaining the strategy to you, why we choose certain expiration dates, why we choose specific uh, strike prices. So if you go to our YouTube channel, um, we actually have those videos uh, there on our YouTube channel. Uh, where is it? Let me just pull this up. If you go to our YouTube page, uh, whoops. We have a video just on credit spreads that I have actually did recently. It was called Optimal Credit Spreads. Uh, right here on uh, just posted a link into the chat window if you want to watch that video on credit spreads we talk about why we choose specific days to expiration we choose about how we choose our strike prices how we manage them when to get in when to get out so those are all available to you as, as well and john is saying hi tony what are the optimal deltas for buying or selling spreads so john that is also something that we cover look for the specific spread that you're looking for if you're looking for credit spreads debit spreads look for that video on our youtube channel we talk about specific deltas for buying and selling if you're doing a call credit spread do you have to own the underlying when you when if you're doing a call credit spread, do you have to own the underlying you're selling the call on? No, a call when you're any type of credit spread, you do not need to own the stock or have the stock in your portfolio. Just sign up for the trial. How do I join the members only session for tomorrow? Jay, um, we will send out an email again later to, uh, to, with this recording tonight um, for you to join uh, for the members only trial here tomorrow, Jay. Um, we will also have a pop-up here uh, tonight. So all you have to do is log on to the Options Play platform. You'll see the pop-up. Um, it'll have the link for you to register for that session tomorrow. Uh, recommendation on your site. Do you have a section for Options Play on ETFs only? Um, for compliance reasons, I cannot play stocks without prior authorizations. Or ETFs are allowed any time. So, Robert, um, th thank you for the feedback. Um, it's something that we will think, you know, we have that information so we can add that to some of our reports to help you identify which ones are ETFs and which ones are uh, stocks. Uh, can we get an email when the credit spread was published every hour? So the credit spread report is published at the same time every hour. It's usually on the around the 15th, the 15s and the 17s. So uh, 10, 15, 11, 15, 12, 15, 13, uh, you know, 1, 15. So um, it's always on the 15s. So come back on the 15s and you're always going to see the credit spreads uh, uh, updated. We're not going to send out an email, unfortunately. It's just too many emails that we would be sending out. Um, if you're already a member, then you should have received uh, multiple emails in your inbox this month, this week. And again, we're going to do a pop-up here this, uh, this evening for you to sign up or register for the members-only session tomorrow morning. Uh, so, Stan, we currently don't have training on butterflies, but that is something I will be launching with the new um, Straddle report. Uh, we, AJ, the strata report is not available yet. That was just telling you what we're working on and what's, what's coming out into the future. David, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Tom is saying, is being long stock but short a high delta call a good strategy to collect dividends with no capital loss? Um, long stock but short a high delta call. Tom, let me think about that. Um, I don't think so because if I'm not mistaken, you would be paying the dividends out through the high delta call. Let me think through that. I, 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 need, to, I need to work that out and do a little bit of math on that. Um, you can send me an email if you want and, and, I'll, and I'll think about that and actually uh, look at some, some use cases 
generally speaking, I don't think that, you know, otherwise that's just effectively a free arbitrage opportunity. And usually arbitrage opportunities don't exist. Am I the only one having uh, J? So again, uh, you know, please send me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out with that. Do you ever post triangle trades? So Steve, that is something we'll be looking to add with the straddle report. That's the last thing we wanna to add to that report before we actually publish it. Do we need level four approval to sell straddles? Yes, generally speaking, you need level four approval to sell naked straddles. Sanjay, you're very welcome. Elizabeth, since we know the schedule webinars, no need to send requests to register. Um, yeah, I agree. We're, we're working on kind of reducing the number of emails that go out. Would you recommend weekly credit spreads? So Trevor, this is also something that Tom and I talked about on our session. So I highly recommend you to watch that. And we both agree on this. You know, selling weekly credit spreads can be, uh, you know, an, an easy way to make weekly income. But that will blow up in your face once in a while. And as long as you're okay with that and you're okay with essentially wiping out two, three, four months worth of work in a single week by selling weekly credit spreads, you can do that. Um, we don't recommend it. And it's, it's I, I don't know what to say other than the fact that it's what we call picking pennies up in front of a steamroller. Um, you're just going to keep penny. You're going to keep collecting small premiums, and it's going to. And that sounds like great, right? It sounds like you're making weekly income, but you know you're going to have one or two weeks that really blow that that strategy out of the water. And as long as you're okay with that type of setback, and you just go back at it and keep moving along and keep doing it week after week after week, have a setback and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. If you're okay with that, by all means. I'm not the type of trader, um, so that's why I don't sell weekly credit spreads. Uh, Sandra, no. A members only sessions are only available to members. Those are not available on YouTube. Um, so only members will receive the recording. It's an unlisted pay, it's an unlisted video, so you can't find it. It's not available publicly, Sandra. Is it possible to enter a premium when one modifying this? Is it possible to enter a premium when modifying the strategy? So Pete, no, you can't modify the premium. You can change it between the bid and ask price, but you can't enter your own premiums. What book or info is best to get info on understanding the Greeks? Um, you know, I would say there's a good book here, Understanding Options, the second edition. Uh, by Michael Sincere. I'll post the link into the chat window. I think this is a pr pretty good book. It does cover basics on Greeks. I posted that into the chat window. Is there any plan to uh, add Canadian stocks into Options Play? Share. There's already a Canadian version of Options Play. You can access it at optionsplay.com slash TMX. Um, I'll also post that link into the chat window. So that is already available. JB, you're very welcome. Uh, your guidance on liquidating the contract on earnings 50% is only applicable on spread vertical contracts or also other types, cover calls, buying calls. Um, it is mostly on, it is on selling credit spreads specifically. Each, each strategy has their own rules, AJ. So I highly recommend to find the video on YouTube for the specific strategy that you want to trade and, we'll, and I highlight the, the rules for each one. Okay. Um, I really have tried to get through as many questions as possible, but I am coming up to the end of the time. But I want to thank Erin for taking the time out here today. I really hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding as to all the things that are available to you here as an options play, free trial or a member. We do have that uh, members only uh, rapid fire session tomorrow morning. Really looking forward to doing that. I always enjoy that. I know many of you do. So I hope to see you guys bright and early. We're going to try to take a full hour tomorrow morning to just look at your trade ideas. I will make sure that there's a pop-up on the Options Play platform tonight for those of you that are on a free trial to make sure that you register for that or if you come in tomorrow morning, you know, before the session that you have a way to register for that. And we'll send also uh, a link here tonight with tonight's recording for you to um, register for that for members. So with that, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great evening and I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great night.